Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and today's video is about something you may have run into playing around with SimSmith, or it's something you could have run into making VNA measurements. What we have is two circuits in this SimSmith big circuit. One circuit has a generator here, a load here. The other one has a generator here, a load here. Both have the same generator. They both have the same load. But the circuit is the same circuit, but it's turned around backwards in one case. So let's look at the impedance that we see looking from this generator into this circuit and from this generator. From the one on the left, we see this. It starts off at about 75 ohms, 74.9 it says. And what we have is the capacitor across these two resistors. At high frequencies, the capacitor dominates and it looks like just like a capacitance pretty much. Here we have 329 330 picofarads in series of 0.3 ohms. This circuit starts off as 75 ohms also, but at high frequencies, it's going to look like 25 ohms. And we can see this heading off towards 25 ohms here if we go high enough in frequency where the capacitor has completely shunted out the, the load resistor. These both are exactly what you would expect. Let's look at this on a square chart. On a square chart, we'll look at the input as far as an SWR is concerned. So let's look at C1 to start. What we see is a 1.5 to 1 SWR, which is 75 ohms. And as the capacitor starts to take effect, the SWR rises and eventually will rise up here to, to almost infinity. This circuit starts at 75 ohms also, but as the capacitor becomes more, more of an effect on the overall load, what we see is 25 ohms. 25 ohms is a 2 to 1 SWR. So this again looks reasonable. Now let's look at the power output in the, into the two loads. The load on the left has a power that starts 0.64 watts. We have one watt generators capable of producing one watt into a 50 ohm load. These are not 50 ohm loads. We see an effective power at the load of 0.64 watts dropping down to near zero at 100 megahertz. The second circuit has exactly the same output power. And this is the issue I want to discuss. The, this, this is a circuit that fits in a category of circuits called reciprocal circuits, meaning when you put them in, in a network analyzer and make a measurement, they have the same S12 measurement or S21 measurement. You can put any kind of circuit you want in here, and what you put in here can be transformers, transmission lines, pretty much anything, not an active amplifier. And there's a few exceptions as to what belongs this category called reciprocal circuits. But let's just go with this for the moment. This is very interesting. Both these have exactly the same output power, even though they have massively different input input uh, impedances. So let's do a little bit, a little bit of research on this. If we do a Google search for reciprocal networks and something like S21 equals S12, we find the first the first hit here is from a really good website, Microwaves 101, where they describe all kinds of RF topics. We'll go there and they talk about reciprocal networks. Reciprocal networks have S12 and S21, or it doesn't matter whether it's S13, S31, it's between any two ports, it does not depend on the direction in which you make the measurement. All types of passive components, with a couple exceptions, uh, such as some ferrites that are used in things like circulators and isolators, will fit in S category. So for me, Almost every measurement I make, unless it's an amplifier, has this has this characteristic. And you can go and look through this more if you wish. And it turns out that the um, there's proofs of, of how this all works and everything. Kind of interesting observation. I remember the first time I ran into it, I thought I had saved the wrong file because the two files, the S11, excuse me, the S12 and the S21 measurement were identical or virtually identical. It's kind of interesting. Now let's look at the same thing again, except in the previous example, it was easy to turn the circuits around. If I build a circuit that's more complicated, I'm not very capable of turning the circuit around easily. So what I did here, and this is something I use a lot, I built a ruse block that has effectively a double pull, double throw switch here. So based on this value for REV, zero meaning the, the, the circuit looks like this, and one means this is on the left, this is on the right. By playing around with the values of these resistors, I effectively form a double pole, double throw switch. You read, read a little bit about it uh, if you wish. 
but it, it works very well, and I use it for a lot of other purposes too. I get asked periodically if if the ruse block can do things such as this, and the answer is yes, you manipulate the contacts as resistors, and it works just fine. But this circuit has a coupled transformer, which has a coefficient coupling of 0.8. It's got capacitor, it's got resistance, so it has loss in it. What we have, looking from the from the right side, from the generator side, looking into the circuit, we have an SWR, which is this blue curve. And let's look this way, looking this direction. That's the L dot R E V Z. And I plotted that by saying on the SWR axis, plot L dot R E V Z. So we're going to look this way and this way at the same time for impedances. Look what happens when I reverse the circuit. These two curves are going to swap. They did. We see different impedances. But notice that this curve doesn't change at all. Circuit has exactly the same power. And you can see it's down in the Smith chart too that the impedance is looking in. Well, let's plot them both. They just they just swap. So we see the we see that the circuit has is indeed swapping. We see again once again that the output power of the circuit does not have any effect on the direction that the circuit was measured. I just thought that was a uh, kind of an interesting topic. Also, I get like I said, I get questions about doing things like this in the ruse block all the time. Take a look at this. The files will be available, of course, for download. I enjoy it. Um, hopefully, if you like this type of video, let me know. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't already.